Yeah.
We are most blessed, most fortunate to be observing the Tirabhaktiti, the Divine Disappearance Day, the Viraha Mahotsar, the festival of separation from the lotus feet of our most dear Srila Rupa Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami Pariki Jai! Srila Vrindavanas Thakur had said, Ishwarera Janma Titi Jehenu Pavitra Vaishnavera Saimata Titira Charitra In the same way that the birthday or the appearance day of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, or any of his incarnations, in the same way as that day is pure and glorious, so in exactly the same way, the appearance and disappearance day of the Vaishnava is equally glorious and purifying. Consider that. Yeah. Consider it for a moment. You know that if today you were Janmashtami right, or Gorpani, then you would be so excited. Oh, it's Christmas birthday. Janmashtami, very big, big celebration. But Shastra tells Ishwara Janmatiti Jehe no Pavitra Vaishnavera Sai Mata Titira Chaitra. The appearance and disappearance day of the Vaishnavas is not less. So as you become enthused and engaged in services and making a wonderful arrangement to celebrate Janmashtami, Gorpani and so on, not less you should do for this day, the disappearance day of Sri Rupa Goswami. In fact, this day is very dear to me because my Guru Parapadma, he used to make a very big celebration for Janmashtami for one day. But for Rupa Goswami, he used to make celebration for five days. <laughs> Why? See, Rupa Goswami holds a very special position among all our Acharyas. In fact, our Sri Gaudiya Guru Parampara, we take great joy in the, the title Rupa Nuga Gaudiya Guru Varga. The line of spiritual masters who are all Rupa Nuga following Sri Rupa Goswami. Why are they following him? Because the closest and dearest friend of Vishwanu Nandini Shinati Radhika is Lalita Saki. And Lalita Saki, she has a group, her gun, and in her group there are some maidservants who are somewhat younger, but they, they have a low position in the group. That means by Pada Maryada, by the etiquette of status within the group, they have a lower position. But by hmm, Saiva Sobhagya, that is by the fortune of the service opportunities which are available to them, in that sense they are superior. Why? Because Shinati Radhika, with her contemporaries, Lalita Vishaka, Chitta Tapakulata and others, who are of similar age, if she'll meet closely with Krishna, she'll feel some inhibition and shyness in their presence. So knowing that, in order to not restrict their, the rasa of their pastimes in any way, when Radha and Krishna go into the kunjas of Vrindavan, Lalita and Vishaka will retreat into the distance. They'll meet and talk together beneath a tree on the bank of the Jamuna at some distant place. But the younger maid servants, they'll stay very close to Radha, Simati Radhika, like her shadow. And anything that she needs at any time, they'll provide that and serve in the most anukul, in the most favorable way. So 
This is quite astonishing. Just as a person is not shy in the presence of their own limbs. So because the maid servants of Radhika, they're so close to her, she considers them to be like her own limbs. She never feels any shyness in their presence. So her sweet pastimes with Sri Krishna, those younger maid servants, they can be privy to them, they can see them. But Radhika will be ashamed and she will hide those pastimes even from her closest friend Lalita. Huh? <coughs> Sri Vishnachak Thakur has written, huh? one day hmm, Radhika came with the Sakis to the forest. Hmm? And in the course of their hmm, wandering here and there they met with Sri Krishna. And Krishna took Radhika away to a solitary place. Lalita and Shaka were searching. Where did she go? At that time, Radha Krishna were playing together. And in the course of their play, their garlands were broken, their necklaces were broken, their hair was disheveled, their cloth was scattered here and there. And then, afterwards, then Radhika, she's a bit concerned. Perhaps the return Vishaka will come here soon. If they'll see me like this, they'll make me the butt of jokes. They'll make so many jokes about my character. Mm, you know? Lalita calls Radhika Kalantini. Means uh, notorious for that behavior, Kalantini. Mm. Out of love, she can even chastise Radhika. So Radhika was concerned about this. So at once, mm, the maid servants of Radhika, headed by Rupa Manji, they redecorated Radha and Krishna. They restrung their garlands, restrung their necklaces. And all their cosmetics, which were smeared here and there and washed away by perspiration, they also painted that as well. Perfectly. Exactly as it was before. Huh? And just in time, Lalita Saki arrived there. Huh? So when Lalita Saki came into the Kunj, hmm? Radhika was on one side. And Krishna was on the other. And standing in between the two was Rupa Manjari, going like this. Don't touch my Saki. Huh? Don't come near my Saki. And Krishna was trying to go this way and that way and Rupa Manjari was blocking him. Whichever way he went. Lalita looked at Radhika and saw she was completely untouched. Immaculate, perfect. And the doubt came in her mind. Huh? There was no mm, Lila, some of my Lila of Radhakrishna today. She looked, she, she thought, really? It was like that. Huh? And Krishna said to Lalita, Oh Lalita, I'm trying to help your friend. Hmm? Your friend is feeling pain, you know, if you step on a thorn, you step on a thorn, you'll have some pain. Hmm? So Krishna said, Your friend is feeling so much pain from the thorn of her chastity. I was trying to help by removing it. <laughs> But this maid servant keeps getting in the way. And so I have failed. And Lalita throws out. Rupa Manjari became so bold, how she can control Krishna. But who knows the truth? Who knows the truth? Hmm? The truth that even Lalita does not know, Radhika knows, Krishna knows, and Rupa Manjari knows. So just see, what is their position? Though they are jewed by Pada Marjada, that means by the etiquette of their position, they are junior. In fact, Sri Vishnu Tarkitaka, his culture, Ujjala Nilamani, he describes how, you know, in Vedic culture there's a caste system, and some castes are higher than others. But within each caste there are also jat, sub-castes as well. And so, the gopis who are from the higher nobility within the Vaishya, the Gop community, they become Radhika's Sakis. And those are from the lower nobility within the Gop community, they take the position of maidservants. So, by Padamarjaga, by the social etiquettes, they are in a lower position. But by Saiva Sobhagya, 
by the great fortune of the opportunities to render service to the divine couple, they are incomparable. No comparison at all. So how wonderful is this? So the leader of the maidservants in the group of Lalita Saki, that is Sri Rupa Manjri. And that Sri Rupa Manjri came into this world in the form of Mahaprabhu's very dear associate, Srila Rupa Goswami Pai. Ah, how much nectar is in these services and pastimes? We have just told a little bit of one pastime. Hmm? Little bit. Don't take it in an ordinary way. In fact, generally I don't discuss these things. It's not appropriate to always discuss these things and in a general audience. But today all the audience are more advanced than me. So, and, and it's Rupa Goswami's disappearance that I'm allowed to say something. Don't take it in an ordinary way. Understand what is the Leela Tattva. Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami said, Sakyasi Radhikaya Bajakumata Vidur Ladini Nama Shakti Prima Sarang Savalya Kishalaya Dala Pushpari Tulya Satulya Sixthanam Lilam Rita Rasanichaya Ula Santya Mamusyam Jatulasam Sosechat Shataguna Madhikam Santiyatan Nachitram Radhika is like a wish fulfilling creeper. She's like a beautiful flowering creeper that can fulfill all the wishes of Krishna. In fact, when Krishna sees Radhika, she's so wonderful, she's so beautiful. She not only fulfills all his dreams, she, she even inspires him to have dreams he never had before and fulfills those as well. So she's a wish fulfilling creeper. And as a creeper becomes more beautiful, if it has beautiful leaves and flowers and buds. So Radhika is more beautiful when she's surrounded by her leaves and flowers and buds. So the leaves and flowers there her, Saki is Lalita, Vishak and others. And the buds, that means the new flowers which have not opened yet, just coming. Very young, very sweet. They are, the word for bud in Sanskrit is manjri. If you see the Tulsi plants, when the flowers grow, there's a, flower, there's a flower here and another one and they go around in a spiral like this and they get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Until they become buds. And if you look closely, the flower is perfect, but the next one, which is a bit smaller, is also perfect. And the next one, which is younger and smaller, is also, so though they get smaller and smaller, they're still perfect. And when the bumblebee comes and lands and takes the nectar from the flower, though the flower is not touching the small buds which are coming from the tip, yeah, but the small buds are trembling when the bumblebee takes the nectar from the flower. So in the same way, when Sri Krishna takes the nectar hmm, from meeting with Radhika, then the buds, which are, the mantras are like the buds on the wish-fulfilling creeper of Radhika, they're all trembling. Because by Yadavashrai Vritti, Yadavashrai Vritti means that Radhika's Mahabhava is so powerful that it spreads out and influences. Hmm? That emotion influences everything her around her. You know? If she's feeling joy, all the trees burst into flower. If she's feeling separation, all the trees dry up and become crooked and twisted out of shape. Like her mood becomes in mind. So everything is affected by her. So this Yadavashrai Bhritti has two aspects. One is called Brahmanda Shobha Karita. That is in separation. That the pain of Radhika, it causes even the fish in Yamuna to weep. Even Krishna being far away in Dwarka, in the embrace of Rukmini, will faint when Radhika cries in pain in Brindavan. The demigods in heaven begin to sweat. Even Lakshmi Devi in Vaikuntha starts to cry. What kind of praying is this? What kind of love is this? This is the power of Radhika's Mahabhav. 
That's called Brahman the Shoka character. It is in separation. Mohanakya Mahabhav. But there is something. In Rudabhav, that is called Asan Janita Ridvilola. It means that this love pervades those persons who are close enough to see or hear. So it's a little bit different, you see? Brahmanda Shoba Karita, Karita is the effect of Mahabhav, how it perturbs the whole universe. But there's a special experience which is only granted to those who are close enough to see what Radhika is doing with their own eyes or if they're a little bit outside the kund. Because, you know, there are two ways of finding the divine couple. One way is you can be close to them with the chamar and find them. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to give them a little uh, more privacy, you can be outside the kunj and there's a ceiling fan with a rope that goes outside and it hangs down outside so you can mm-hmm. stay outside and pull the rope and inside the ceiling fan is going like this. <laughs> <laughs> so two ways of fan. Eh? So, mm-hmm. if you're inside, then you can see the lila. So then, asan janita read viloda. Radhika's bath will vyapt, it's called vyapt, from head to toe. Those who are fortunate to be there, they become vyapt, permeated by Radhika's mood. Hmm? Now Radhika's mood, that is Madhana Kimabhav, no one has it. It's not in anyone. Radha yam deva ya sada, only in Radhika. But, if someone has the fortune to be close to her, to see her at that time, then they can become Biapt, completely permeated by that brain. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came to give this This brain is such a brain, this love is such a love that before Mahaprabhu came in this world to give this, what to speak of attain this love? Even the name the description of this love had never entered into anyone's ear. That is how rare, that is how high is the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, but also those who are outside, but not far away, just outside, pulling the rope, they cannot see, but they can hear. Aneka mantra nada manjunu purara vaskala samaja raja hamsa vamsa nikkala they can hear the sound of the ankle bells of Radhika singing in a way which is so beautiful. It crushes the pride of the warbling of the, her, of the flock of Rajahanksa swans. Mm-hmm. They can hear the sound of the Mekala, the chain of bells around the waist of Radhika. So only hearing. Also, they become vyapt, <laughs> completely permeated by Radhika's Madhanakya Mahabhav, that is called Asana Janata Vidvilogan, by seeing or even close enough to hear also. Therefore, it is a Jatola Asana Sosaita Chataguna Madhikam Santi Yattana Chitra. It is not astonishing that when the nectar of Krishna's Leela is poured on the creeper, then the leaves experience hundred times more happiness than if the Amrit had been poured upon themselves. Hmm? In other words, when Krishna meets with Radhika, then the Manjuris, they experience hundred times more joy than if Krishna were to directly approach them. Hmm? Therefore, Srila Prabhupada and the Sars of Thakur, he said, Ananya Sri Radha Pada Kamala Dasya Karasadhi Hare Ange Sangam Sapana samayena pidadati Balak Krishna kurbara sakiti kamapya charitika Pradasyo meleti pralapati Manatma chahasati The maid servants of Radhika, they are one pointed. Ananya, Ananya, Sri Radha Pada Kamala Dasya Eka Rasa Eka Rasa, one Rasa. The one Ras of what? Radhika Pada Kamala, the nectar of the lotus feet of Radhika Ananya. 
undivided Ananya. Hmm? And being one pointed in the service of Shimati Radhika's lotus feet. Hmm? If Krishna will give them an order, they may or may not follow it, they will decide. Right? Whether it's Anukul to Radhika or not. Hmm. You know? Rupa Goswami gave the definition of pure bhakti. Anukul yena Krishna Anushulam Bhakti Uttama. There's a very deep meaning to this. Krishna has so many moods, like Shat. Mm -hmm. Dakshina. Shat means Krishna's a rogue. Mm -hmm. He's two-faced. That he speaks very sweet words in front of you. But behind your back, he does unfavorable things. That is the hero who's called Shat. Mm -hmm. And he very cleverly hides it. He speaks a sweet, sweet words. Mm -hmm. But, oh, just before he came, he was up to some no good. Mm -hmm. So that is called Shat. Then Krishna has another type of hero. All these things I'm telling. If Rupa Goswami did not describe them, he wouldn't know. Yeah? Rupa Goswami described Krishna as 96 heroic moods. There are 96 different types of heroes. And no one person can be all of them. Or even many of them. But Krishna is Akhila Rasamri Tamurti Prasimara Ruchi Udata He is the embodiment of all 96 different types of heroes. So when he's in the mood of Shat, that is a, the duplicitous person, Chita, then we don't have to serve him. Those who follow Rupa Goswami don't serve him. If he's like that. Rupa Goswami himself wrote a beautiful verse about Shat. Shato yam na vekshya punari amayamana danaya Vishantam stri vesham subala suridam bara gina Itam te saku tam vachanam apadayus chalitati Skalato parago papakaram avarachami kimaham Once Krishna he was on the way to meet with Radhika But somehow the, he came, he got diverted By one of the sakis of Chandravali And unfortunately for him he ended up in the kunj of Chandravali so when he was, he tried to, to not stay there too long, but he was a little bit late for his appointment with Radhika. So he was on the way, he was on the way coming to meet with Radhika. So at that time there was one parrot who was flying above his head. And the parrot said, Oh Krishna, oh son of Nanda Maharaj, you have so many qualities. You are a prince, you are handsome, you are... You're beautiful, hmm? but there's only one thing lacking in you. You are not intelligent. Huh? You're not intelligent. Huh? So then Krishna thought, oh no. This parrot saw where I went. And this parrot is Radha Paksha. It's more leaning towards radical service than to my service. And that's why this parrot is criticizing me. And now, Krishna worked out the logistics in his head. Right? It's probably about so many kilometers from here to where Radhika is waiting. Mm -hmm. Now, who can get there first, me or that parrot? This is a very critical point. It's really important. So then Krishna realized, the parrot will get there first. Uh -huh. And then his face became completely, he became deflated. He thought, I was thinking I'll go and meet with Radhika, but by the time I get there, this car will have told her everything. And then, it will be a very big problem. She'll have Durjoy Man, the unbreakable, sulky mood. Then for how many days will I be in separation? I don't know. Uh -huh. So then Krishna's face, became very sad. So Rupa Goswami, he wrote, when will I be wandering in the forest thinking, where is Krishna, where is... and then I see him coming, and I s from a distance I see the parrot criticizing him, and see that look on his face when he just <clears throat> becomes completely deflated. Ah, oh, yes, that's what I want to see. <laughs> Repent! <laughs> Repent, Krishna. You know, in this world we have to repent. We have to repent for our sins. Uh, 
When, when Rupa Goswami met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, yeah, for the first time, he was taking straw between his teeth and falling on the ground again and again. And he was crying. Matulya nasti papatma aparadita kastana payavari pilatim ekimbu vay purushottam. Oh my Lord, there is no one more sinful than me. There is no one more offensive than me. And in regard to my unvirtuous activities, I am even shy, I hesitate to give them up. I won't even give them up. Oh my Lord, what more can I say to you? This prayer, Rupa Goswami said, Mahaprabhu's heart was breaking seeing the humility of Rupa Goswami. Srila Bhakti Nautakur has written, also in Chaitanya Tarvita is mentioned, that through Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught humility to the world. How? Rupa Goswami is so denied a piece of each part, very, very humble. But he has written, and so he's repenting in his sadak form. But in his siddha form, as Rupa Manjari, he's thinking, Krishna, you should repent <laughs> huh? for your misdeeds, for your crookedness. When will I see Krishna's face at that time? So then, when Radhika found out she didn't want to see Krishna, and Radhika said to Rupa Manjari, Satoyam Naraksha Apuna. Krishna is shot. Hmm? Completely duplicitous. Hmm? Therefore, Satoyam Naraksha Apuna Hiha. I don't want to see his black face here again. Hmm? I have my pride, I have my dignity. He cannot just cheat me like this and then I will just accept him. No. So Rupa Mantri, I want you to stand at the gates to the courtyard of my pavilion, my Kunjakutir, in the forest of Vrindavan. Stand there at the gate and be a guard and watch out for him. But be careful. Visantam Sri Veshum Subala Suridamba Rayagira. That friend of Subal. Subala, she calls him Subal Surit. Why? Because he doesn't want to. Say his name. <laughs> She's so upset. It, that friend of Subal, watch out for him. And be careful. Why? Sri Vaisham. He may dress up as a woman and try to infiltrate our kunj in disguise. Hmm? Because his cousin Kundalata, you know, Krishna has a cousin Kundalata. When he's in a difficult situation, sometimes Kundalata will uh, lend him some clothing so that he can come in disguise. So Radharani told Rupa Manjari, be careful, watch out for him, and if he comes, don't let him inside. So, why is Radhika giving this responsibility to Rupa Manjari? It's very important. Because there are five types of Sakis. First is just called Saki, like Brinda, like Nandimukhi. They love Radha and Krishna, but they lean towards Krishna. Hmm? Then there are the Paramprastha Sakis and Priya Sakis. Paramprastha Sakis are Lalita Vishaka Chichatamakulata. Hmm? So the Paramprastha Sakis and the Priya Sakis, they are called Samasneya. They have, have loved Radha and Krishna, but they love them equally. Now the speciality of this Samasneya is that according to the time and circumstances, what's going on in the Leela, even though their affection for both always remains the same, but if one of them is being a bit cruel to the other one, they'll make a show of more affection for the one they feel sorry for. Hmm? So this, this Neya is Sama, it's always the same for both of them. But that's very difficult for a person to discern that because it seems like it goes up and down. Actually, it stays the same, only depending on where the, the, the one who requires the most sympathy. Uh, then they will show more love for that person temporarily in order to persuade the other person to accept them. Uh, so, for example, 
if Krishna will do something cruel, then they'll for sure, Lalit will for sure take the side of Radhika very strongly. But sometimes if Radhika's man is very strong, and she then Krishna is suffering too much. And if he traveled a very long way in the freezing rain, and he's standing outside, soaked from head to toe, with all his wet hair strapped to his face and shivering, then the leader will go to Radhika and say, It's enough. He's outside, he's freezing cold, just why don't you accept him? So those are samasnaya, they're equal to both. And then their loyalties will seem to go both ways according to the circumstances. But there are the pranasakis and nityasakis. Pranasakis and nityasakis are asanasneya. They don't have equal love for Radhika, they have more love for Radhika. More love for Radhika. And the leader of the nityasakis is Rupa Manji. That means that Radhika knows that if I tell her to guard the kunj, and Krishna comes and he's crying and he makes so many excuses. She will not change her mind. Huh? She will not take his side. She's very partial to me, Radha Paksha. Hmm? If, I, if Lalita will be there, maybe Lalita can change her mind. But Rupa Manjari, she will not change. So Radhika has that confidence in her. So she's telling, go. Then so Rupa Manjari comes to the, the gate of the courtyard. And he's standing there watching out. Hmm? Then she saw one beautiful gopi coming. A shama saki. A dark complexion, beautiful saki. Then she remembered what Radhika told her. And thought, oh. Then she called out, Hey, Mohini Murti! <laughs> you know, Krishna has a female form. <laughs> called Mohini Murti. Huh? So then Rupa said, Hey, Mohini Murti! Hmm? There are no demons here to cheat from the Amrita. Because Mohini Murti appeared to make sure that the demons didn't get any Amrita. So there are no demons here to cheat from Amrita. So your services are not required here. <laughs> so you should go and Meditate on your sins. <laughs> think, of, think on your sins. <laughs> so Rupa Goswami, Sri Uttali Kavari, he has prayed like this. Oh, when will Radhika give me this service? Huh? So, I'm wondering where I'm going here. With no plan. So we were discussing how the main service of Radhika they have decorated her. All her um, decorations were broken and cosmetics was much here and there. But very quickly they redecorated her and she became perfect again. It has a very deep meaning. Profound meaning. Understand that Radhika is the complete Purna Shakti, Ladini Shakti, Krishna's pleasure potency. And she wants to love Krishna in millions of ways. So each one of her moods has manifested a murti. And each gopi of Vrindavan is one murti, one deity of one of Radhika's loving moods. Kalavi. Kala means portions. So Radhika is Krishna's nija rup. Radhika is, Radhika is Krishna's pleasure potency. And the, each gopi is a color. One portion of a different flavor of Radhika's love taking a form. Hmm? One, her vishesh bhav is called vishaka, her lalit bhav is called lalita, her rupi is called rupa manji, her lavanya is hmm? lavanya like this. Each one of her bhavs has become a different gopi. Hmm? And so, they are not different from her. They are not different from her and Krishna because Shakti Shakti Matayo obeyed. But they're playing like coward boy and coward girl and sakis in a village. Narava Kila, human like Kila. Hmm? Therefore, 
Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami. He said, Vibura Pisuka Rupa Swapaka Shopi Baba Shanama Pina Hirada Krishna Yo Yarke Swa. Sravati Narasa Pushti Chippi Vuti Rivecha Sayati Napadamasam Kasakinam Rasakya. The meaning is that the happiness, the ananda, the joy of Radha and Krishna is nitya eternal. It is swapakash, self manifest. It is vibhu, all pervading and perfect. Yet still, they cannot experience even one second of happiness without their sakis, without their friends and mates of it. How is that possible? Their happiness is eternal, their happiness is self-manifest, their happiness is all-pervading and ever-increasing. That's a contradiction. But still, they cannot experience one second of happiness without their sakis. Friends, hmm? why? Prava hati raso pushtim chitvi bhuti ivesha. Understand the identity of these friends. Just as ivesha means, just as Isha Parameshwara, the Lord of Vaikuntha, Lord Narayan, Lord Narayan lives in Vaikuntha, and he enjoys his pastimes by virtue of his mystic potencies. He has unlimited mystic opulences and those unlimited mystic opulences are manifest in the form of his various associates and he enjoys his various leaders. So in the same way as Ishwara, Lord Narayan, enjoys his pastimes by the influence of his embodied mystic potencies, so similarly these girls who milk cows and churn yogurt are actually the mystic powers of Radha Krishna's love manifested as gopis cowherd girls. And therefore they are always there serving in every way and bringing Ananda to Radha and Krishna. Nikunja you know radically Siddhya Yaya Vibhi Yukti Rabati Tatra Tidaksa Rati Valvasya Vande Guroshi so our Guru Varga, they are Chidvibhuti Ivesha. Our Guru Parampara are the manifestations of the mystic power of Radha Krishna's love. Actually, that is Guru Tantra. Understand? And therefore, now we bring it back to the pastime we discussed in the beginning of the class. When Radha Krishna played together, because Radhika has anurag, that means love, which is so intense that Krishna appears newer and newer every moment. Even though she relishes so much Madhurya rasa in her meeting with Krishna, after tasting a vast ocean of rasa, she feels as if she didn't taste even one drop. Not even one drop. That is the intensity of the thirst. That level of brain is called anurag. So, when Radhika looks at Krishna and sees she's overwhelmed with desires, new desires, she feels as if the pastime never happened. She wants that pastime to happen again. And she feels as if it did not happen. That desire is there. So, automatically, her sringa and everything becomes new. That is the, her anurag. Her sringa, her rupa, her ornaments, her decoration, and Krishna's all become new again. But how does it become new? That is by the mystic powers of her love. And therefore, these manjuris are the outer manifestation of Radhika's anurag. It looks as if they're decorating her, but it's the newness of her anurag redecorating her because of the newness of her love. Understand? So there is nothing mundane, that, though it is naravach, human-like, but actually it is nothing uh, like human also at the same time. Naravach means uh, there is some similarity in form, in rupe, 
in form there's a similarity, but in swarup, in the inner nature, it is something far, far beyond the capacity of the understanding of even Lord Brahma, or to speak of the ordinary mortal beings of this world. So, that Rupa Manjari, in 1489, he appeared in this world as the son of a Brahmin, Karnataka Brahmin family in the Paradwaj Gotra, in the village of Bakla Chandradeep. And being from a very high class Brahmin family in his childhood, he had very good education. He studied under Vidya Vachaspati, one of the brothers of Sarabhom Bhattacharya. And because he was very, very intelligent, by force he was, he had to accept a post in the government as the personal secretary of Nawab Hussein Shah, the emperor of Bengal at that time, Nawab Hussein Shah. So he was living in the palace of the king. He used to dress like a Muslim, even, and had to interact according to the customs of Islamic society. So he was very shamed, ashamed about this. And when he met, when Mahapu was on his way to Vrindavan the first time, Mahapu came to Ram Kelly, and Rupa Goswami said, I am most abominable. I am worse than a meat eater. Why? I am the servant of the servant of the meat eaters. How sinful am I? But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Rupa Goswami, actually I had no business coming here to Ralph Kelly. People were wondering, why did you go there? But the truth is, I just came to meet you. Before, Rupa Goswami met Mahaprabhu, they were in touch with each other by correspondence, sending letters backwards and forwards. So at that time, Mahaprabhu had sent a letter to Rupa Goswami, and when they met, he reminded Rupa Goswami. He said, I could understand your heart, and that is why I sent this letter to you. Paravyasa nini nari, vyagrapi kriya karmasu, tadeva svatyata svatyayatanta, Navasangarasayanam. The meaning is, there's a housewife in lady culture. She lives at home and she's serving her husband. But she's part of Yasanini Nari. She has a secret lover. So, she's very eager to meet with him. But even though she's eager to meet with her secret lover, she stays in her home, and in her home, she does all of her housework and duties perfectly. Why? Because if she become lax, then people will become suspicious. What's wrong with you? Don't love your husband? So, but Marco said, even though she's in her home, and she's very meticulously performing all of her duties, but, tad eva aswadayantya navasanga rasayanam. Even while she's doing those duties, in her heart, she's relishing the, the mellows newer and newer at every moment, as if she's meeting with her beloved. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent this poem to Rupa Goswami. And it has a very profound significance on two different levels. On the first level, the level of the sadhak, practicing devotee. If we want to make progress in our sadhana, if we want to realize the pastimes of Sri Krishna, if we want to realize our swarup, then how we are doing sadhana how we are chanting, how we are remembering, and whatever realization is coming, never speak that. Don't talk about that. Don't show it. 
Show the opposite. Hmm? Show the opposite. Uh, I am angry, lusty, thirsty, hungry, lazy. Uh, opposite. Uh, and inside, keep everything inside. Because when you're cooking, you know, if you're cooking rice, if you put the lid on it, it will cook very quickly. If you take off the lid, the pressure goes away and then it's very slow. Uh, so in, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Kapil Dev, Lord Kapil Dev told his mother, secrecy is very important. If you want to attain success in your spiritual life, one of the keys to success is secrecy. Aparna bhajana kata na kati bo jata tata. Srila Narakanda Stakur said, don't speak about bhajan, your own bhajan here and there. So, just as the wife who has a secret lover very carefully hides everything from everyone else, so the sadhak should do bhajan like that. This is one level of meaning. And the other level of meaning is related to the Siddha. In other words, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, through Rupa Goswami, he wanted to show the importance of two aspects of Radha Krishna Lila. The first aspect is the power of separation. Truly, if you spend time in Vrindavan and associate with Vaishnavas of other Sampradayas, we respect them, we love them, and we find some inspiration from them. But you see that there is always a stress on Nitya Milan, Nitya Nikunja Lila. Radha Krishna always in the Nikunj. Always in the Nikunj. They don't even go home. They think if Radha Krishna will go home, the Rasa will go down. So they have Nitya Nikunj. Radha Krishna always in the Lila. Okay. So in that conception, there is some Aishwarya Bhav. Yeah? Because no human being can just be playing with his girlfriend in the corner 24 hours a day. Everyone has to go home do a job or something. Right? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> what about your mother and father and your brothers and sisters and everything like that? So, for the Radha Krishna Lila to be in Lakshmi Narayan can be always in one place frolicking together if they want. But Radha Krishna, this Madhurya, none of us human like pastimes, if they'll stay too, too long in the kunj, then Mother Yashoda will be looking out of the gates of the town. Where's my boy? He didn't come back. Where are all the cows? All his friends will be looking for him. So Krishna has, in the human-like pastimes, there are other responsibilities. But these responsibilities don't make the rasa go down. This is the wrong idea. So Mahababu, through Rupa Goswami, wanted to show the world that separation the separation lila not only doesn't make the rasa go down, it makes the rasa go up. And not only that, but this vipralamba, this separation, has many, it has vaichitrata. Vaichitrata. It has many, many different varieties. And so, these varieties bring about vaichitrata of meeting. Because the meeting that takes place after different types of separation is different types of meeting as well. So, the, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted through Rupa Goswami to expand upon the specialities of separation and how that gives rise to specialities of meeting. We will not be able to explain in too much detail today. Tomorrow we will continue with that, that subject. And the second thing which is embedded in this verse, the very first verse Mahaprabhu gave to Rupa Goswami, is the importance of Parakya Rasa. Because you see in the other Sampradayas, they worship Radha and Krishna. And either they have the conception that Radha and Krishna are married, or they're not married, but Radhika is Kanya. She's unmarried maiden, still living with her parents in Varsana. Only Mahaprabhu, through Rupa Goswami, wanted to reveal that is incidentally also Parakya. But within Parakya there's Kanya Bhav, the illicit connection of an unmarried maiden still living with the parents. And then there is what is called Paroda Bhav. Paroda Bhav means that she left the parents' home and is married. And having a husband. 
But she's always thinking of her beloved Krishna. So through this verse, Mahaprabhu gave the seed of these two ideas related to the our Siddha form in the Lila. That is the importance of Vipralamba Rasa separation and secondly Parakya and especially within that Parodabhav. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Rupa Goswami that he was going to Vrindavan and that he should escape from his home and meet with him there. But on the advice of Sanatana Goswami, Sanatana Goswami said to him, Vrindavana Yata E Nahi Paripati, oh Mahaprabhu, this is not the right way to go to Prajnanda Parikrama, surrounded by thousands of people. Because they all have different moods and so your own mood will not manifest. So on the advice of Sanatana Goswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went back to Puri and then the next year, he went to Vrindavan. And so, Rupa Goswami also escaped from his royal mm, service in the family of the Muslim king. And when Mahaprabhu was coming from Vrindavan and Rupa Goswami was going there, they met in Prayag. So in Prayag, they sat down at a place called Dashashvamedagat. The significance of that place is that that is the place where the Supreme Lord inspired all the Vedas in the heart of Lord Brahma. In the Chattasloki Bhagavatam, yeah, in the heart of Lord Brahma, at the Sashvameda Ghat. So now, Supreme Lord, in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, has met with Rupa Goswami and did the same thing. Just as Krishna inspired Lord Brahma with the Vedas and how to manifest the universe, so similarly, the Supreme Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inspired Rupa Goswami through his heart how to manifest the universe of Rasa. Vrindavadiyam Rasa Kalivartam Kalina Luptam Nida Shakti Putka Sancharyu Peja Tanopurasa Prabhur Vido Pradiva Loka Shishtim That is described by Srila Kathi Karnapu. So Mahapu said Parapara Sunya Gavir Bhakti Rasa Sindhu Toma Chakai Kitahi Kai Eka Bindu O oh, Rupa, this ocean of Ras has no shore and it has no bottom. It is vast. So how can one describe it? Therefore, just to, so that you can taste it, I will describe a single drop. So it was as if Mahaprabhu took the finger of Rupa Goswami, dipped it in the ocean of Ras and said, hey, taste that. And from the instructions of Apu, Rupa Goswami tasted one drop. And that drop was enough to inundate all of the millions of universes. It became Bhaktira Samhita Sindhu, Vajjana Nila Mani Lalit Mara Vidaka Mani Vidarkali Komadi, all Stavamala, Natak Chandrika. So, by the influence of Mahaprabhu, Riddhi Yasya Prayaranaya Prabhati Toham Baraka Rupopi Tasya Hare Parakamalam Rupa Goswami wrote, whatever I have written here, it has been inspired in my heart by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. Him huyanti yat suraya means the, the scholars and even the devotees who came before, they were bewildered on how to understand, how to express even some had realized and tasted bhakti rasa. Don't think that mm, Bhagavan Mangotaku didn't taste bhakti rasa. He tasted. Mm. Don't think Jagannath Swami didn't taste bhakti rasa before. Well, they tasted for sure. But mm, they were not empowered how to express mm, the rasa tattva, the framework, the grammar of that rasa. So, you all know what rasa is, right? In theory. Uh -huh. Who will tell what is rasa? Taste. Taste. It's a good start. The taste of what? Any taste? No. Taste of love. Taste of love. What kind of love? Unconditional love. Uh, towards 
Even, even love is not yet rasa. Because bhakti is love. But bhakti is not yet rasa. Yes. And Sattvic Bhavya nourish the Stai Bhavya. Uh-huh. And an astonishing taste is produced. So, the first and main contribution of Rupa Goswami is Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So, we, have, we should try to appreciate that this Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is a Paribhasha Shastra. Paribhasha Shastra means a text of definitions which precisely and scientifically define without any mm, overextension or underextension of definition what are the various components of devotional life what is faith what is sadhana bhakti what is bhav bhakti what is prema bhakti what is vaidhi bhakti what is raganuga bhakti mm? so all the definitions are given there and those are in the line of Rupa Goswami. They're very enthusiastic to try to assimilate and understand what he's given us because it's a vast treasure. And perhaps in the beginning it may be, seem a little bit complicated or tedious. But Siddhanta Boliya Chite Nyakoro Alas. Srila Krishna Skaras Goswami said, Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Try. It, I promise you it will be worth it. It will be worth it. It will take some effort and you, at first you may feel like you're breaking your brain and it's too complicated. But anyway, don't worry. Serve your Gurudev, chant Harinam and try. It's actually not dependent on your intellectual abilities. Only just, if you desire to know and you please your spiritual master and your Vaishnavas, chant the Holy Name, gradually it will come. But it will not come without effort. You have to try. So Rupa Goswami, he wrote, Bhavana Yapade Destu, Budaina Nyanya Buddhina, Bhavyate Gara Sanskarais, Chite Bhava Sakatate. I mentioned it last night in the Kata. How? When you associate with the Brajarasik Vaishnava and serve them, they speak the pastimes of Krishna and the philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in such a way, such a tender way, such a moving way. It will go into your heart and make a sanskar, an impression. And those sanskars will become very deep. And that is called Garda Sanskar. Deep impressions in your chit. Now what happens is, as the devotee is practicing bhakti and the anartas go away, he comes to the state of buddhi ananya buddhi. Ananya buddhi. The consciousness is completely steady, chitta is steady and absorbed in the holy name. So when the chitta is steady and the devotee begins to meditate on the Gara Sanskar, the deep impressions that have come from Rasik Vaishnav Sangha, then the devotee begins to experience the Samagri. That means, Samagri means ingredients. Rasik is a taste. But it's made of a combination of different components, ingredients. They are called rasa samadhi. Hmm? So, on the basis of the gada sanskar, you begin to have a perception of a rati. Rati is the study bath, a found particular foundational sentiment. Oh Radhika, I am yours. Oh Krishna, I am yours. Oh in Madhuya rasa. With more inclination to radical than Krishna. That is the type of rati. Bhava lasa rati. Hmm? Of the maid servants of radical. Bhava lasa rati. So, some that you discover by the mantra given by Guru and the kata given by Guru, and you look inside and you'll discover the deep impressions that enable you to experience rati. Hmm? And it is near Guru, Shuddha Sattva. It is by the influence of Nirgun Bhakti when Tamagun, Rajagun has gone away. Some sattva may be there, but that is also being... Sattva doesn't block this experience. Because sattva is clear, like a window. And so you can have experience of Nirgun, Rati Vastaiva. And as you go on meditating, then 
On the basis of sanskar, the vibhav, the stimulation of rati, the anubhav, the responses, the sattvic abhavs, the bodily mm, uh, reactions, and sanctuary bhavs, those are 33 types of transitory assisting emotions. Mm? They say there are 33, but actually in Madhurya Rasa, there's only 31. Because one century bhav is not there, there is ugrata. Ugrata is ferociousness. So there's no ugrata in the gopis. They, they can become angry, but it's called pranayko, loving anger. Not actually ferocious. Even though it's, it's actually more scary for Krishna than ugrata. <laughs> Because gopis know how to use prema rasa like a weapon <laughs> and put the fear of God into Krishna. And Krishna cries, Hari Hari, oh God, what have I done? I made Radhika upset. <laughs> in Gita Govinda, Krishna is crying, oh God, what have I done? <laughs> Radhika is angry with me. <laughs> so, anyway, but Ugrata is not present, and another one, Alasya, laziness. Laziness is not laziness is one type of transitory emotion. Eh? Just like Madhu Mangal, Madhu Mangal is taking prasadam with Krishna when he gets like two liters of sweet rice, ooh, 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 and then he just collapses. <laughs> eh? okay. So that's one type of ecstasy for Madhu Mangal. But gopis don't have this alasya, this laziness ecstasy. So then Krishna's inside the kunj, talking sweet words with Chandravali, and outside the kunj, Mother Mangal, he was trying to work the fan, but collapsed from an overdose of sweet rice. Yeah. Mother Mangal in his dream is talking. Oh Radhika, please be patient. Krishna will arrive very soon. He's just making some excuses to get away from Chandravali. Yeah. And Chandravali hears Mother Mangal outside talking in his sleep. Krishna says, why did I bring this clown with me? <laughs> Next time I'll bring Subha. <laughs> so this is how the various ecstasies combine together. <laughs> you see, rasa is not just one feeling. When the the the, the, the rati, the stai bhav, the vipav, the anubhav, the sattvika bhav, and the vyabhachari bhav, actually, rasa means intensification of the stai bhav. When the Staiva of Rati is intensified by, by the mixing with the other ingredients, Vibhav, Anubhav, Satvikabhav, Vyabhachari Bhav, then Bhav, Bhav Mai Bhakti becomes Ras Mai Bhakti. So when you only have an internal perception of the ingredients in your meditation, that state is called Bhav. But Vyatiti bhavana vartma yas chamatkara bhara bhu chitei satrujale bharam swarjite sara so mataha. In the next verse, Rupa Goswami said, But as you go on doing bhajan and there's a greater flood, there's a flood of Shuddha Sattva. Hmm? The spiritual, divine spiritual energy, Vishuddha Sattva, bhav intensifies, then what happens is you were experiencing the individual samadhis, you had that perception, but now they mix together and you can no longer taste them individually, but you taste them, what it tastes like when they're all mixed together, and that combined taste is called rasa. Rasa Maya Bhakti. Hmm? So a person may even have gone through the stages Nishna Bhuchi Asakti Bhav, but still they have not attained rasa. And in fact, Rupa Goswami said, he gives all the definitions in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, and one of them is the definition of the adhikar, adhikar, the eligibility to taste rasa. What is that? Praktan aadhuniki chasti yasha sat bhakti vasana. The person who has gada sanskars, the deep impressions of rati, in this life and the previous life. Then, in this life, they will be able to experience rasa. 
So only those who have actually come to the stage of rati in the last life will experience rasa in this life. And those who have not in this life, one may attain rati and have some experience of the samadhi. But actually to become rasik, those are the great souls who have the Garda Sanskar from the last life. And so there are some symptoms in them. There are some symptoms. Rupa Goswami said, they know all Bhagavatam. All the verses of Bhagavatam are flowing, one after another. Why? Because they learned it all in the previous life. So you can, those persons can be identified. Yeah. So, Srila Rupa Goswami has explained to us what is Sadhan Bhakti, Bhav Bhakti, Prema Bhakti, what is Rasamai Bhakti. And he has explained all the various ingredients also. And so that means. How are we doing for time? Oh, two minutes left. Two minutes to explain all the stages of brain. <laughs> Up to Madhana Kimonava. We need some help from Yoga Maya now to stretch. Stretch the time. Bhagavan Mapitara Tri Sharvat Paldumalika. Yoga Maya can do it. So, Sila Rupa Goswami, he has taken each one of the five ingredients and explained them all. For example, each one of the 33 sanctuary bars, he's explained them, but given examples in each of the five rasas. As well. So 33 times 5. Uh -huh. So he's given, he's explained all the sattvic bars. There are eight, but they're also manifest to different degrees. And he's given all the examples in the five rasas. He's explained 13 types of anubhavs in all of the five rasas. He's explained the vibhavs. How many types of vibhavs? Countless vibhavs. All the different vibhavs, alamban and udipana. Vishaya Lamban, Ashraya Lamban, it's a little bit technical. Uh, but he's explained all of them, in all of the rasas also. Uh -huh. He's explained the study bhav and how the, that is called Kram Prakash, the gradual evolution of the study bhav through the stages of Prem, Sneha, Man, Pranaya, Rag, Anurag, in all of the rasas also. And each stage has so, there are so many different types of Sneha. There are so many different types of pranay. There are so many different types of rag and anurag and so on. And so he has opened out all of these things. No one else has done it, ever. It was never done. What he did is absolutely astonishing, completely mind-blowing. It is superhuman. It is not anything that any worldly person could ever conceive. So I humbly request, if you have not already done it, try to study completely from beginning to end Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Ujjala Nilamani. Go through carefully. Be in the association of Rasik Vaishnavas. Read and ask questions. Because without Asambhasya Tarbhava Gambira Chitam, without the ongoing conversation with Rasik Vaishnavas, our sadha and our understanding will not be updated. It will not grow and grow. So the study should be undertaken under the guidance of advanced Vaishnavas. It will change your life completely. When you hear just the word Rupa Goswami, you feel like, oh, I'm so happy I want to die. <laughs> huh? Really? Huh? So special. I just have perhaps a minute, so I just want to tell one... Oh, I'm one minute over already. So, I just want you to tell one very nice point. Perhaps you can just introduce it and we'll finish it tomorrow. That is, before Rupa Goswami, people knew something about rasa because the great sage Bharat Muni had written a text called Natya Shastra. So Natya Shastra is essentially um, dramatic theory. Dramatic, I think all the drama players will be coming soon too. And we'll have to leave because they're going to rehearse in here. It's dramatic theory, so it explains everything, how to make a stage, how to decorate the stage, how to make costumes, how to compose dramas, how dancers should express the, the emotions through different mudras, 
777 different mudras. And so in great deal, all different aspects of drama have been described there. And the life of drama is the rasa. Mm -hmm. The emotional content, which is driving the drama. So he's written something. But, Bharat Muni said there are eight rasas. And the eight rasas are one, love, then comedy, chivalry, anger, compassion, disgust, fear, like this. There, so there's, there are eight rasas, love, and what we call the seven secondary rasas. But he said there are eight rasas. Now the Puranas, Sri Vyasadeva in the Puranas has mentioned, actually, these are the seven, Hasya, Bhuta, Veera, Karuna, Rodu, Vibhatsa, Vainaka. That is comedy, chivalry, astonishment, disgust, fear, anger. These are actually sanctuary bars. They're sanctuary bars. And the Puranas say that there are five primary rasas. So Bharat Muni said there are eight rasas, but the Purana, Vyasa they said there are five rasas. And Vyasa said that seven of the eight rasas of Bharat Muni are actually sanctuary bars. So now Rupa Baswami, he cannot go against Vyasadeva, but Bharat Muni is also not Lagu. He's also a guru. He's not lightweight, he's heavyweight. Huh? So he also cannot say anything against Bharat Muni. So how can Rupa Goswami be the first person in world history to reconcile Bharat Muni's Natasha with Vyasadeva's Puranas and then apply that not to mundane dramas, dramatics, the secular rasa, but to the Aprakrita rasa, supernatural rasa of Krishna Viva. How can he do that? That we will explain tomorrow at 12 Sarasana. Sila Swami Paki! Jaya Rupa Goswami Jaya!